So uh, our next reader is Chris Rogers. Chris began her creative journey as a graphic designer, but as her career evolved, her artistic expression took new forms. After a devastating fire gutted her art studio, Chris forged a new path in the literary world, publishing award-winning suspense novels that were, produ that were produced in multiple formats and translations. Today, Chris writes and paints from her studio in Hilltop Lake, Texas. Chris? Minus one, never go home. Breathtaking, rule allowed the human adjective to settle before considering another. Exquisite, neither word came close to describing Gianna. On the day they first merged ener energies, Gianna's azure skin had shone like the rarest gemstones. Her beauty was intoxicating. I'm not Gianna, by the way. I am Jolene, <laughs> Rule's mother, who doesn't appear in this book, but will appear in the next one. Close, but not adequate. Jin words were equally useless. Gianna was focus, Rule. In the ship's study room, Qualeo's biological energy spark glowed yellow-green with frustration. Apologies, mentor. I did not expect separation to cause such, such desnic human words. Rail, rule, you must learn to communicate. Pain, rule could not prevent his own spark from revealing his misery. Anguish, dolor, pena, souffrance, schmerz. Earth has so many vocabularies. Mentor, how is it possible to assimilate them all. Corleo's spark softened. We have no choice. Rule knew he was, he should feel gratitude. His shipboard friend, Tolan, had been dispatched to align with the arthropod population of Relcor, basically a race of oversized insects. Two planets remained, Earth, a world where the reigning sentient creatures were physiologically Genzoid, and Benora, a world of advanced technology, but inhabited by legless, soft-bodied creatures resembling giant worms. Rule would be assigned to one of these planets. Another emissary, Elman, would go to the other. No one questioned that life among humans was more desirable, but Earthlings were diversely complicated and, according to the Council of Seven, more likely to be hostile Benorans the council believed, would be more receptive to outsiders. Focus rule, resist the useless temptation to pine for what we've lost. What if there is no future for us, mentor? What if our memories are all we will ever have? You would mark us defeated before you even begin your assignment? Perhaps the council should reconsider. Apologies, mentor, I will focus. Sweeping aside the painful memories, he studied scatter waves of Earth's most powerful nations. In land mass alone, the Russian Federation had to be considered dominant, although the greatest population lay in the People's Republic of China. Both countries appeared to be major contenders against the United States of America, which held third place in both population and land mass, yet fell to number six in economy. The wealthiest country, Qatar, was quite small with an equally small population. Why the disparity? The United States resided in the Western Hemisphere, Russia, China, and Qatar lay in the East. If the three Eastern countries were to form an alliance, rule reasoned, surely their combined resources would easily reign and reign of power seemed to be of paramount interest on Earth. Perhaps it was this flaw of disparity that created such a volatile environment, leaving Earth as the last planet in this sector to be considered for gen habitation. If the physiology of Earth's people were not so similar to their own, 
the Jin Council will have rejected this world as too violent. Leave the crazy world to me, Elman Spark entered the study room. But Nora's slugs are more your pace rule. Perhaps you're right. I prefer a well-ordered mind. And like you, Elman, earthlings can be intrusive. Complex is how Cornell describes them. He believes I have the ability to succeed on the more complex planet. Does he? Time break. Religion appears to be a major point of contention on this world, Rule said when Carlyle came to check on his progress. Would it not be helpful to unite the Earth in following one God? That single success could go so far toward gaining peace. I suggest you remain neutral on religious issues, Rule. Those battles cannot be won by mathematical or scientific reasoning. Rule was not ready to give up, but he chose not to argue. Another area of contention is the planet's reliance on natural resources that can be converted to energy. Although wind, water, and solar are being developed, economic dominance appears to result from the available availability of fossil fuels. Mm-hmm. You may have hit upon a point, uh, you may have hit upon a problem which our experience can provide resolution. The council will be pleased to know you're moving ahead. Rule could not help wondering how Elman was progressing. Despite being strongly in favor of universal equality, Rule did not want to merge energies with the slug. On the scanner, Russia's cities appeared richly ornamented and thus more interesting than others in the Eastern Hemisphere. So Rule enlarged the view of Moscow. Except for their skin color, humans appeared to be more like Jinns than he had anticipated, and watching them brought an ache to his heart. Everyday people going about their everyday lives. Then he saw a male and a young female with darker skin tones. A number of lighter skinned males dressed much alike and carrying long black clubs appeared to be following them their faces were locked in furious determination. Closing in, they encircled the pair and began beating them. Mr. the useless Jen word thundered from Rule's thoughts, then Ostanovit, as he remembered the Russian. But it was equally useless because he was not on Earth, not in that city, and he could do nothing to stop the beating. How could such a thing happen? The screams they were only in his imagination, since the scanner did not transfer sound, but they seemed no less real. Then the beating stopped as quickly as it had started. The young men dispersed, leaving two mounds of battered flesh and in a pool of red. Rule snapped off the scan. In that beautiful city, as advanced as any on Earth, people acted as the lowest form of savage. Was this normal, or had he happened upon an anomaly? Turning to a less agitating form of study, he read that what he witnessed was labeled a hate crime, and such crimes were not as prevalent in Moscow as they once had been, although St. Fredericksburg was a gathering place for ultranationals. I have hmm, got dry mouth. Could someone bring me a, my cup of water? <laughs> I have allergies and you know how the... Uh, a gathering place for ultranationals, a type of gang that despised anyone who wasn't Russian. Finally, returning to the view screen, thank you so much. Rule accepted that if he were to be of use on this violent world, he had to brace himself for the horrors. Learning that China had a much lower crime rate than Russia, Rule resumed scanning at the city of Beijing. He was thankful to see nothing as terrible as in Moscow, but he did see a young male being escorted to a death van, a form of execution which the Chinese government had adopted to control costs. Their manner of control was 99% conviction of all people charged with a crime and punishment for, by death for even theft or fraud or for soldiers in subordination or cowardice. The death van's worse efficient Rule had to admit, a convicted criminal went in, and a short time later, the convict's organs were en route to hospitals for transplant. 
Qatar, which professed to a minimal number of executions, preferred to make those punishments a community event, including death by firing squad or hanging, since Qatar was small and commanded a rich economy, which might account for the low crime rate, rule also scanned Saudi Arabia. He forced himself to witness the stoning of a young female whose crime was having sex outside of marriage. She was buried to her neck in sand, then a crowd of men wearing robes and beards and angry expressions threw fist-sized stones at her head while hundreds of people watched. Sickened by what he had learned, Rule realized that he could not expect to succeed in gaining acceptance in any of these eastern cities. Could the West be any different? The United States had a far higher prison population than other nations, yet a low number of executions compared to the eastern countries. Rule was unsure what that meant, but he scanned the city streets and saw nothing of note until a number of motor vehicles with flashing lights converged. Rule was grateful not to witness the deaths of the two men who were slain. Rule's spark wavered as he attempted to understand the many repulsive actions which had occurred during his relatively brief time at the scanner. How many other violent crimes had occurred during the same time span? Creatures so filled with bitterness and fear and hatred would not welcome interstellar refugees with kindness, possibly not even long enough to listen to what they could offer. He wondered how many other emissaries were encountering insurmountable problems. He also wondered, where do you go when you can never go home again? As his spark began deepened to indigo, Rule thought perhaps he should leave Earth to Elman. Ah, I see that you've completed your study of the blue planet, Kralil remarked. You will find Bamora equally intriguing in many ways, though quite simple in comparison. A hive structure, Rule said. He had only just discovered it. The workers exhibit excellent motor skills, while the master has virtually no motor skills, yet vast mentality. It is actually a splendid arrangement, master. The mind and body physically disconnected, yet synchronized. Where would an emissary to Benora find the greatest opportunity to gain acceptance? That question lay at the heart of the mission rule new. We offer to provide what a world needs, but has not discovered. Benora appears to be advanced in technology. Their structures are intricate and sound, but not artistic in design. Each master presides over a specific territory and coordinates with other masters to accommodate a unified development. Focus on what they do not have rule. Art, literature, music, humor, pleasures of the soul. But without knowledge of these things, mentor, how can they appreciate what we offer in return for refuge? That is the precise question every emissary faces. To introduce fire on a world that has never seen it will cause fear and panic, not acceptance. You must make a plan. Watching his mentor leave, Rule wondered why the all-knowing council did not already have a plan. The council was like a Balmoran master, dictating desired outcomes while emissaries served at their pleasure. Admittedly, not a fair comparison, because they were all fumbling for answers to their dilemma. It was not enough to find a planet suitable for colonization. True, the 20% still in possession of corporeal bodies could make an uninhabited world viable. But if the 80% continued to use those same bodies for energy replenishment, they would soon expire. The ideal world must have thousands of sentient beings who might each be convinced to host a single gen energy. Somewhere in the vastness of space could a world, such a world might exist. Would they find it in time? Banora's hive mentality would allow instant communication among the masters. If an emissary could entice one master to appreciate artistry, then all would have access to that same knowledge. Attention, said a voice from the study room interface. Please report to the infirmary. Emissary 12 has returned. Tomir, Rule did, Rule did not know her well, but as emissaries, they were all friends, and she had been dispatched to a world of exceptional promise. He hurried toward the infirmary. In the hallway, he met Elman, from the fading of Elman's spark, Rule knew that 
beyond the window, all was not well. Unsure whether he wanted to see after all, he watched one spark then another turn pale with sadness. Before Talmir, three emissaries had returned. None had survived without impairment. Reluctantly, Rule moved to the window. Inside the sensory chamber, Talmir's spark was so weak and gray as to be almost invisible. Alone again in the study room, Every time Rule's thoughts strayed upon the horrors he had witnessed on earth, his spark faltered. He could imagine nothing there but failure. By contrast, communicating to one Banoran master the pleasure to be gained from the currencies of art, music, and literature would more than half accomplish his mission. But could they perceive color, distinguish musical tones, appreciate the concepts of storytelling, fable, or allegory, Rule would only learn the answers through experience. There was a serenity about the Norans that he had come to appreciate. The workers appeared content in their busy lives, while the masters were free to contemplate new, unexplored technologies for improving their society. Perhaps they would recognize art as an interesting technology. The day arrived when Rule was as prepared as he would ever be, Elman joined him at the entrance to the council chamber. Ready for Slugville? Elman taunted. Perhaps you should concern yourself with your own readiness, my friend. Despite their rivalry, Rule wished all the best for Elman. They entered the chamber and faced the council of seven. On every gen ship in the vastness of space, other emissaries would appear before a similar council. No one knew exactly how long they could survive aboard the ships without finding refuge on a compassionate world. If just one emissary succeeded, there would be hope. The prime elder spark brightened to a clear yellow glow. Emissary Elman, emissary rule, welcome. You are charged with the most important undertaking any Jin has ever known. Your academic preparations have been examined. Your natural abilities assessed. The council has matched each of you with the appropriate destination, knowing that you have the courage, compassion, and wisdom to succeed. And we send you forward with the fervent support of every being aboard this ship. The transfer ports await. Elman, our prayers go with you to Benora. Rule, our prayers go with you to Earth. Mm -hmm.